The Treasurer's Office Women's History Month Outstanding Achievement Arts and Humanities Awardee is Sharon Samuels Reed. Sharon Samuels Good morning. Reed. Good morning. Sharon began her professional career as a music educator with Peoria Public Schools in 1972. After teaching for 22 years, mostly at Woodruff High School, she continued her professional service as chairperson of cultural studies at Pekin Community High School for seven years. She remains a leader of influence for the arts in public and private schools and communities for over 30 years in Central Illinois. Before retiring in 2008, Reed served Peoria Public Schools for several years as the Director of Fine Arts. Additionally, she served as Administrator of Peoria Public Schools 21st Century Community Learning Centers Program, working as an arts educator. She founded the Heritage Ensemble which exists to celebrate the culture and history of African-Americans through music. For over 20 years, the ensemble has worked to tear down walls and build bridges between all people by exposing people of all cultures to the diversity, beauty, richness, and complexity of musical literature born out of the African-American experience. In the past three years, she's led a collaboration with the Peoria chapter of the NAACP with a nationally based Afro-academic Cultural, Technological, and Scientific Olympics, ACTSO program. Mrs. Reed serves on several boards and commissions for various organizations. Her family owns a paint studio in the Warehouse District of Peoria. It's a popular venue space to host paint parties under the leadership of her son, Ryan Reed. So Sharon, thank you very much for joining here today. Congratulations. And maybe you can share with some of our viewers what inspired your interest and passion for music. Well, thank you so much for having me participate in this program, and it is quite an honor. I am humbled. I, I was uh, very surprised, but appreciated very much. My passion for music is probably all that I know outside my family, my faith. I started studying music when I was eight years old in Texas, and since that day, November 12th, 1958, I have either been a student of music or a teacher of music without a break. And so my passion uh, has changed over the years, however, when it was about me performing at one point, I graduated college during the civil rights movement, and that passion for my performance became my passion for helping everybody to live a better life through their interaction with me and music. Well, it's obviously been very vital for you uh, but even for people who aren't involved or professional musicians or artists, you've worked with educating youth. How vital is art and music to education and youth development? Well, I believe that the arts is one way that we can close achievement gaps. We can blur lines. We learn more about each other. That's, we learn who we are through the arts. And when we have a better understanding of who we are, then we can begin to appreciate everybody else and not just use that word tolerance, but celebrate people through the arts. And I really think that high quality arts programs will make a difference in our schools. But because we're not tested and funds are limited, we struggle with ways to keep that very, very important part a part of the core curriculum. Well, you made a good point about understanding who we are, but it's important to understand other people in different backgrounds. So can you talk Absolutely. a little bit, can you tell our viewers about how important uh, culture, diversity, and inclusion is in our communities and how the arts can help there? Well, the Heritage Ensemble actually was born out of a need to fill a cultural gap in Peoria. When I moved in here, I came in in 72. There were no uh, professional or semi-professional or even inclusive organizations. When I say inclusive, I'm not talking about two or three people. I'm talking about a significant number that um, symbolizes or mirrors what the community is made of. And so we didn't have anything like that. So finally, after performing together with, other, with a group, a poor group, whenever there was a need for African-American centered production, the community would call on me. Well, then I thought, well, who better than I to just build an organization where we don't have, we're not sitting around waiting for someone to have a production that is of particular interest to us. And so I teach the music from the Heritage Ensemble from a from an historical perspective, because this music helped to build America to what it is today, and it certainly serves as the root for what we as Americans celebrate as an art form, jazz. 
So we, I teach the, the music and the heritage ensemble as very diverse and as an education. And so we call it edutainment. You might be entertained by the beautiful music that we do, but at the center of that is one's education to understand who we are and the impact that we've had on this society. So how, how big is the ensemble? and How many performances do you think you do a year? Well, when COVID was not ruling our world, we did two, three major performances a year. One to celebrate the birth and accomplishments, achievements of Dr. King in January. We do a Juneteenth, which is the oldest known celebration to the Emancipation Proclamation. And then in November, we do a fundraiser, which is all jazz, and we bring jazz artists in for the most part, and we just do a cameo performance, if you will. And then we do performances for churches and or civic organizations that ask us to be on their programs. So it depends on any, you know, any year what it can be. Yeah. Well, you've, you've uh, hinted at some of the, the big problems out there. Everyone has faced challenges and struggles during the pandemic, but the arts in particular, when people couldn't gather in large groups. So what challenges and struggles have you faced during this pandemic? Well, we actually grew exponentially in our uh, viewership, in our personal knowledge, uh, I should say, my friends around me, personal knowledge, which you can tell that I don't have much knowledge, technologically knowledge, uh, but we did not miss either one of our concerts. We took um, concerts that we'd had before and picked particular songs to fit that. We, we closed down essentially in March, right? Well, by June, we were up doing a Juneteenth concert. We were in the midst of a lot of political civil unrest. Well, the music of the Negro spiritual, the music of the heritage ensemble was the kind of music that we needed to hear to find some comfort, to find a way out of no way. So we took that music, chose ones that we wanted, and we highlighted the first responders, whether they were medical or fire, or, you know, ambulances, all of those people, we highlighted them. And my daughter is a professional photojournalist. And she was out there taking pictures of all of this. So we used her pictures to be able to put them across the screen while we sang. And it was a beautiful, beautiful Juneteenth concert. Well, I think if I remember right, uh, soon after the pandemic started, um, we had uh, the George Floyd murder. And right. did, that, did that result in, in, in more interest, more requests uh, for the ensemble? I don't know that it uh, generated more requests for us because that's all we do. Yeah. We are very, very focused on music that is born out of the African-American experience and how it can show us to, uh, to continue to keep the faith, to communicate with each other, to be able to use that music as an inspiration to keep moving when it feels like you are walking in quicksand. We think that if those who were enslaved um, in this country could keep moving through those situations, we can use their music to walk us through and to inspire us for what we're going through today. So we did grow exponentially with our viewership because it was online where it had not been before uh, in that manner. So we have people from all over the country now who know who the Heritage Ensemble is where they might not have known before. But one of the main things that we do here in this community in filling that cultural void, we perform works by African-American composers that nobody in this entire region, maybe even the state, perform. They wouldn't hear it otherwise if we were not um, center front performing those pieces. Pieces by Duke Ellington, you know, pieces by Rollo Dilworth, uh, Dr. John Cooper, who is a friend of ours and commissioned, we commissioned pieces through him, and uh, Glenn Burley, you know, um, Margaret Bond, we do those compositions that nobody else does in this area. And so we bring uh, quite, I think, an edutainment element to this community. And musicians come from all over wanting to perform with us because they don't have the opportunity to perform these pieces unless they are part of the Heritage Ensemble on any given concert. Well, uh, it sounds like you have provided a lot of entertainment. You provide a lot of education. For those watching here today, 
do you have any, as we wrap up, any words of wisdom you'd like to share with individuals uh, looking to follow in your footsteps? People who want to be agents of change and forces for social good. I think what's most important is to know who you are and to know whose you are and not to allow the naysayers or the pundits or all of these people who want to label us, us meaning anybody, don't allow those labels. Know who you are, know why you exist, and to keep that dream alive even when it's very difficult. Keep moving forward in things that you know will help you to become more of an agent of change and will affect everybody around you. So just keep the faith and public, please do love your artists because the artists are really suffering during this time. So just love them and know that when we really need some solace of some kind, we go to the artists of the world to read, to speak, to communicate through music, to put our words on, on a canvas when simple words won't do. We keep, in my opinion, and that's my story and I'm sticking to it, we keep the world alive. Well, Sharon, that is some great advice, some good counsel. I think that's why Sharon Samuels Reed is the Illinois Treasurer's Office Award recipient for our Women's History Month Outstanding Achievement in Arts and Humanity. Sharon, thank you thank for joining you. us today. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much.